this club, man. I'm excited, I'm excited to be here in a room full of adults. Uh, I say this because one of the last shows I did was a sweet 16 year old birthday party. Yes, there's nothing any of you can say or do to me that can crush my spirits. Like 16 year old girls can. Okay, at that party I felt like I was 16 again. I was like, I hope they like me. And they didn't. And, <laughs> and that's okay, I hated those bitches too. <laughs> not a problem, not a problem. I never thought that I would uh, do a show like that. You know, when I started doing comedy, I want to take it serious, right? I went and got some professional headshots done. And it is amazing how a good camera can make you look like a piece of shit. <laughs> I tell you, I was not made for high resolution, okay? You gotta come at me with like an iPhone 6 camera. Okay. Anything better than that is capturing a truth I'm not ready to accept, okay? I'm not, and I know I look like crap in photos because half the time when I click that auto enhance feature on my phone on my pictures, it cuts my face out completely. <laughs> I'm not even lying. All I want to do is brighten the picture up a little bit. My phone's like, you know what would be even better? <laughs> if you weren't in it at all. That's, <laughs> that's how my phone treats me. That's how it treats me. That's all right. I travel a lot for comedy. I, I was in South Dakota. I was there in January. It was cold. And I did not have the nipples for it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. Some women have perfect perky nipples when it's cold out. That ain't me, okay? When I stepped off that plane in that seven degree weather, my boobs did not look like Pamela Anderson from Baywatch. They looked like crazy eyes from Orange is the New Black, okay? <laughs> one was looking that way, one was looking that way. Really confusing. Really confusing time for me. I went to a... <laughs> I went to New York City, I'd never been there before. I thought the coolest thing I was gonna see in New York was like Statue of Liberty, Ground Zero, Empire State Building, no. Coolest thing I saw in New York City was this guy walking really fast and then he tripped on a pigeon. <laughs> I've never seen that before in my life. And that pigeon didn't give a shit, it was crazy. The guy tripped on the pigeon, looked back, the pigeon didn't look back. Just kept walking. Birds are built different over there. I didn't like it, man. The more time I spend in the big city, more I uh, realize I don't like big city life. I like small towns. I grew up in Olympia myself. I like small towns. I did a show out in Shelton. I don't know if you guys, uh, you guys know Shelton out here, right? Okay. I did a show out in Shelton. It was at a racetrack. I thought that sounded really cool, right? I, uh, I put the, the address in my GPS. On the way out there, I didn't see a single sign that said racetrack. I saw a bunch of signs that said correctional facility. <laughs> Sure enough, this racetrack is right next door to Washington Correctional Facility. Does that seem like good placement to you guys? Is it wise to have a prison right next door to some of the fastest vehicles in our state? And you know they play country music at that racetrack. Can you imagine you're a prisoner? Every Friday, you hear them blasting Rascal Flats, Fast Cars, and Freedom next door. It'd be awful, it'd be awful. I said that joke in Shelton and the entire room got quiet. And I don't know if it's because they didn't understand what the problem was or if they were just figuring out what the problem was. <laughs> right then and there. Good people in Sheldon. I like small towns. What I like most about small towns is people in small towns say shit like it is. I like that, right? I respect that. I took my family to the Southwest Washington Fair in Chehalis over the summer and this lady was showing her animals. She was real proud, little country town south of here. She was real proud. And so one came hobbling out and I'll never forget this because it made an impact on me, right? This lady goes, up next, this heifer's been giving me a lot of guff. She's got a little hitch in her giddy up, but I think come spring, she gonna loosen up, start throwing some calves to the ground real nice. <laughs> I was taken back. Then I thought to myself, what a nice compliment. <laughs> this, this heifer's got a little hitch in her giddy up. But come spring, she gonna loosen up, start throwing some calves to the ground real nice. Like, I wonder if my ex thought that when he first saw me. I walk kind of funny. I do. I do. I wonder if he was like, you know what? This big bitch got a limp, but um, I think I can loosen up, get some babies out of her come spring real nice. Real nice. And he did. We had our son in May. It worked out. It worked out, <laughs> it did. I do, I got a beautiful little boy at home, he just turned terrible. 
<laughs> no, he's great. He turned three this year, he turned terrible last year. I'm tired all the time. I look tired all the time, right? I got a coffee. The barista said she liked my eyeshadow. <laughs> I don't wear eyeshadow, okay? I didn't know what to do. I was like, thanks, it's called Shades by Exhaustion. <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline, maybe my kid won't go to sleep, you know? Like, I'm not out here trying to be a cover girl. I'm just trying to recover, girl. <laughs> I'm just trying to bounce back, you know? Had him a little late in life, my ex and I. were getting older. And getting old's hard. Like, living wild, it used to be staying out all night and partying. Now it's having something acidic after 8 p.m. with no Tums in the house. Right? One time he told me his stomach hurt. I said, take some Tums. He's like, I don't want to take any Tums. I'm like, motherfucker, die then. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you want from me, you know? <laughs> Silly. Crazy, man. Family means a lot to me. My son's great. I know I said that a moment ago, but he's awesome. He's, uh, he's got a lot of energy. You know, he's young, I'm old, it's hard, right? And uh, before I had a kid, I had all these ideals. I was like, my son's never going to have any screen time. <laughs> no sugar. <laughs> Fuck that. Yes, I give my kid whatever it takes for a little bit of quiet, right? <laughs> At, at any given moment, my son looks like he's had three Red Bulls and works at Best Buy. Okay. Yes. He could probably apply a geek squad. He's three, he's got two years experience, you know? If anyone in here has a broken phone, my son can fix it and it's not because he's a prodigy. It's because I'm a bad mother, okay? <laughs> I'm a bad mother. No, I'm a good mom. I love my kid. Actually, what I'm, what I'm sharing more with people is that he was recently diagnosed with autism, right? And uh, it's okay. You know, he, he, uh, it, it was hard for me as his mom because I didn't want the world to be any harder than it needed to be for my kid, right? And when I look at him at home, like, I can't tell that he's any different. He's just my child and I love him, right? But when we're out about at places, like at like Chuck E. Cheese, and he's around other kids, that's when I can tell that he's different, right? That's, that's when I can tell that he is so much cooler than those other kids. <laughs> Yes, it's true. Now, my son's not high on the spectrum, but he's tidy. You know, he, he's... He's young, his ducks are, are in a row because he can't help it, he likes straight lines, okay? <laughs> so we're at places like Chuck E. Cheese, and those other kids are making the mess, they're throwing the balls all over the place. My son's behind those kids, he's picking up those balls, he's putting them in nice, neat, color-coded stacks. <laughs> Other kids are fighting, they're putting their hands on each other, touching each other. My son acts as if they don't exist. His doctor says it's a social problem. I say he don't want none of that drama. <laughs> yeah. Best thing about my kid is when he's mad, he doesn't scream, he doesn't yell, he hums Christmas songs. <laughs> Even when he's mad, he's joyous. Do you hear what I'm saying? We could all use a little autism if you think about it. We could. We'd be happier, more organized, we mind our own fucking business. Wouldn't that be great? Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Now, the only thing I worry about with my kid is whether or not there's a ceiling fan where we're going, because then I can't get him out of it. He's like... It's not mean if it's true, okay? It's not mean if it's true. Love my kid, love my family. My family means a lot to me. My dad, he travels with me sometimes. He's an old Islander man. My family's originally from Guam, right? And he's always on my case to say Islander jokes, but I've been stateside my whole life, right? He's, he's retired military. So he's always like, Lynn, Lynn, say Islander jokes. Say Islander jokes. I'm like, Dad, you guys had me in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> and you moved me to Olympia, Washington. I can do Mercer Island jokes at best, yeah? <laughs> Nothing like being racially profiled by your own father. It's a good time, it's a good time. I did see him profiled once, we were at the hospital. My mom was having surgery and the nurse came out to give us an update about how she was doing, no joke. She looked at my dad, then she looked at me and said, oh, you must be his interpreter. <laughs> and, it is really funny looking back on it because her comment confused him so much, it looked like he didn't understand English for a moment. My, my dad was like, what did she just say to me? 
super articulate, man. And the thing is, when people say stuff like that, I don't think they mean anything by it. I think they're just speaking before they think, right? Like one time I went out to dinner, a group of friends sat down, noticed everyone sitting there besides me was some variation of a redhead, right? They all had red hair. And as soon as we noticed that, my friend's boyfriend leans across the table. He goes, ha, Lynette, what's it feel like to be the minority? It's like, it feels like Tuesday, Danny. Uh, <laughs> feels like Tuesday, dude, you know? It's crazy. I tell you what, though, I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because when it comes down to it, I will be whatever ethnicity gets me a benefit. I will. I used to gamble a lot in my 20s, and I go to the casino on the reservation, right? And sometimes I get something to eat, and one time I went up to the counter, the lady asked me if I was native. All right, now I sensed a discount. Right. So I said, yes. Yes, I am. But then she asked me for my tribal card. Yes, and my young dumbass said I left it in my canoe. I sure did. I sure did. And I did not get a discount that evening. I did not. Rightfully so, rightfully so. My ex, we got a good relationship, and I, you know, he had a good sense of humor when we were married. You gotta have that when you're married to a comedian, because we fuck around a lot, you know? Like, like one time, uh, I had a competition to do. I had three minutes to do my set, right? On the way out the door, I was like, babe, I gotta go. I got three minutes tonight. He was like, whoa, you're gonna need to explode in three minutes. How are you gonna do that? I was like, I don't know, how do you do it? <laughs> Sometimes before we got started in the bedroom, I like to put one of those frozen burritos in the microwave. <laughs> I'm glad you guys understood that. Nice little hot snack when we're done. Three minutes, perfect. Three minutes, perfect. He's good, man. We had... We had this thing, we had this thing, we had passes for celebrities we were allowed to sleep with. Uh, his list was very innocent. He had like Charlize Theron, Mariah Carey, Selma Hayek, you know, women that look like me. <laughs> Thank you, Tacoma. And um, my list, I had like Mark Wahlberg, Justin Timberlake, and the cast of 300. Yes. Now, if you've never seen the movie 300, I am literally talking about 300 dudes, okay? <laughs> and I am only gonna use one pass that night because I'm hoping it's a big event. <laughs> I am, gotta fantasize, gotta have fun, gotta have fun. And people feel bad for him, but don't feel bad. He clapped back in his own way, right? One time we were in bed, our big ass dog jumped on me. I was like, ugh, you ever have 120 pounds jump on you? My husband, without missing a beat, he goes, not since high school. wrong. <laughs> you know? It's all right. It's okay. I was on a bit of a weight loss journey. Then I got pregnant and my weight loss journey turned more into a weight loss joy ride. <laughs> Short and sweet. I, uh, I gained 50 pounds being pregnant with my son. He had the audacity to come out six pounds, two ounces. I thought I was having a 35 pound baby. I did. What's a bunch of crap though is that they don't, what they don't tell you is that pregnancy does not treat all our bodies the same, which is bullshit, all right? Some women have three, four kids, put a bikini on, look like nothing happened to her, okay? I had one kid, I put a bikini on, you wonder what the fuck attacked me. <laughs> my shit looks like I had a GoFundMe at some point. And I did not reach my goal. <laughs> I did not. No, it's good, man. I tried all kinds of things to lose weight. I don't know if you guys know this. It's actually reported that 67% of gym memberships go unused. And I know that's true because I myself was a member of a gym that had shut down for three months before I found out. <laughs> it was very, very embarrassing way too. I was at work. I was talking to this guy. I was trying to sound all fit. And he was like, what gym do you go to? I said, Lacey Ultimate Fitness. He said, no, you don't.
they closed down three months ago. I was like, say what? So I guess they went bankrupt. They didn't go bankrupt because of me because I auto paid them every month on the first, like clockwork. I did try to join Planet Fitness at the beginning of this year and apparently I've been a member since 2017. So, I just got my card and went on my way. Went on my way. I never let my weight stop me. Sometimes I should have though, all right? Like last summer, I went down to San Francisco and I participated in the Escape from Alcatraz swim, right? And if you don't know what that is, that's when a bunch of crazy people get onto these boats. These boats take them over to the uh, Alcatraz Island where the prison was. They jump off those boats, they swim back to the San Francisco shore. Yes, and some people will tell you, you need to be physically fit for such an event. And those people are right. <laughs> I had no business doing this swim. No business. The swim had three boats. First boat was for beginner swimmers. Second boat, intermediate swimmers. Third boat, avid athletic swimmers. Guess which boat they put me on. Third boat, yes, avid athletic swimmers. I was shocked. And so was everyone else that watched me walk my thick ass onto that boat. Now, I had no idea how that happened. Then it dawned on me that I did what I always do, which is lie on my application. It's like, can you swim? Yes, how good are you? The best, <laughs> you know? I, I want the job, you know? The job. People ask me if there's sharks in the water down there. Yes, there are sharks in the water down there, but I thought there was gonna be strength in numbers. There was about, over 100 of us jumping out off those boats that day. My boat alone had 29 avid athletic swimmers and me, okay? But when we all jumped off the boat and I resurfaced, all those other motherfuckers were gone. They were, already, they were already halfway back to shore and there I was. There I was in my wetsuit, looking like a delicious harbor seal. Now for safety reasons, there are kayakers that line this race and because I was by myself, one unlucky son of a bitch got stuck with me. His name, and I shit you not, was Jesus. Jesus was watching me that day. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? I grew up Catholic, that meant a lot to me, okay? So I'm swimming and this is how poorly I'm doing. This is what this man tells me to motivate me. He looks at me in the water, he goes, if you keep swimming forward, you'll have progress. <laughs> Apparently, when I'm in the water swimming, it looks like I don't understand how direction works. That's, that's what I look like. So I'm swimming, it starts to get real dangerous, right? I start to feel like I'm in some real danger. The current's very strong. So I looked at my Lord and Savior, Jesus. <laughs> and I said, it's time, I gotta get out this water. He's like, okay. So he calls the Coast Guard. Coast Guard comes, picks me up, takes me out of the water, takes me to what I think is safety, and I was wrong. That man took me 50 yards in front of the finish line, told me to jump out, finish the race. <laughs> so I jumped out 20 yards later, he rescued me again. Fuck that guy. I said, I, said I was done. I said I was done. Talking about Alcatraz Island, this actually, it brings up a memory for me not too long ago, actually. Uh, I, I, I made some history. I was the first person to book and perform a comedy show at Washington Correctional Center for Men. I got to perform in front of 200 male inmates, okay? And all I gotta say about that is hot. <laughs> I'm recently single, holy shit, okay? <laughs> now, now, I can't spot a red flag, so I thought I'd go where they're manufactured. <laughs> You know, see the process, be a test subject for science. I had a good time. The moment I walked in there, I had a good time. I walked in, the security guard said, arms up, legs apart. I'm like, okay, daddy, what? What? He's like, let me look in your bag. I'm like, how do you know that's what I call it? Oh my, oh my God, that's crazy. 
it's nuts, man. I got in there, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and it's a really cool thing. I make jokes, but it was a really cool situation. And I was sitting there with my, fr my friend, my comic friend. We're watching the show. He starts to get all emotional, right? So he starts talking to me. He's like, man, this is really cool. Like, I can't believe we're here. These people are awesome. They're just, they're really cool. They're, they're people. They're people like you and me. I could really see myself in them. <laughs> and I say, yeah, man. I could really see them and me too. <laughs> it's like, fuck you. I'm like, I'm a mess. I don't need to be in a male's prison. I don't need to be, I don't need to be there, all right? I don't. Recently separated, as I mentioned, right? And people get surprised when I say that I had a husband, and I, and I get it. I, uh, I see me, all right? <laughs> this haircut, these shoulders, I understand, okay? I know I'm not overthinking it. When I brought my paperwork to the family court to file for my separation, lady didn't look at the paperwork. She looked at me, asked me if I entered into my same-sex marriage here in Washington State. And I was like, well, my husband is pretty butch. Uh, I guess I might have, you know, I guess I might have. He got the house and the separation, but that's okay, we were renting, so. I just abandoned my half of the lease. <laughs> it really boiled down to who could pack faster. He actually beat me, but my car was blocking his in the driveway. So, it's gone. My car went on my way. Went on my way. Lonely now. I tell you what. I see some nice couples here in the audience. A little pro tip to you guys: if your single friend tells you that they're lonely, inviting them over to hang out with you and your significant other does not help that kind of loneliness. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm gonna. I see this table right here. I'm gonna use you guys to illustrate what I mean. Are you married? Da married? Okay, I'm just gonna see it. Don't look at me like this. I, <laughs> I just wanna use, use you as an example. Um, miss, if I told you that I was lonely and you invited me over to hang out with you and your husband here, that would be like if I told you that I liked creme brulee and then you invited me over so I could watch you and your husband eat creme brulee. <laughs> Okay? Now, now, unless you're inviting me over so that your husband can eat my creme brulee, <laughs> and you watch, <laughs> let me eat alone. <laughs> let, me, let me eat alone. It's crazy, man. I'm dating now. Pretty sure my ex is already seeing someone. I went to go pick up our son the other day. There was a new can of Glade scented spray in the bathroom. Yeah, he's never bought one of those a day in his life. Who's he finessing the air for? <laughs> Fuck that, I took the can. <laughs> if I had to smell his shit for 20 years, so does the new bitches. I don't think so. <laughs> Not on my watch. Not on my watch. A little bit about my ex, my type. My ex was a beautiful man, beautiful Caucasian man. I like white dudes, that's my kink, okay? <laughs> this room does it for me, Tacoma. I'll tell you what, this is... <laughs> this is great, this is great for me. I like all kinds of men, man. I like white guys in particular because they take you around, they show you all kinds of cool places, like breweries and... <laughs> job sites they used to work at. <laughs> I see the men in here. You ladies have seen some job sites. Oh, don't fuck with me, okay? Summertime, they get excited about floating the river. I like that kind of stuff. <laughs> I do. That's my thing. That's my thing. I'm on the dating app. I've never been on these things before. I was with my ex for 20 years. I had to learn, right? And if you've never been on this shit before, the way it works is you put your information on your phone, onto this app, then you get access to all these guys, these prime cuts of men in your community, okay? <laughs> yes, you see their picture, their profile. If you don't like what you see, you swipe left on their face. But if you do like what you see, you swipe right on their face, you engage in a conversation, you get to know each other. And in this dark time of my life, it's been the best thing for me because it's given me so much material for comedy. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. For example, did you guys know that all single guys in the Northwest live on mountaintops? Did you know that? <laughs> 
Yes, all these profile pictures, these guys, they're on top of mountains, they're wondering why they're single. They're single because no one's fucking up there. <laughs> Me and the rest of the ladies, we're down here at sea level. We can't see you up there. There's, there's a glare. I'm reading these profiles. These guys are like, you can find me at the gym or at work. And I'm not going to find you at either of those places. I don't go there. I don't work with you. I don't, I don't understand. Also, the things that they're saying, I'm not really sure who's falling for this. this is one man messaged me, grown man. He says, how you doing? By the way, hubba hubba. <laughs> what in the Cartoon Network is going on? <laughs> I responded to that man the only way I knew how. I said, ooga! <laughs> what do you say to that nonsense? Thank God. Another man messaged me. He's like, hey, can you talk to me for a minute? I could use a reason to smile. Oh. If you don't get that sad sack of shit out my face. You, you come at me joyous or you don't come at all. To come, I'm not out here trying to fix nobody. I'm trying to get broke, okay? Okay. Also, I'm a bigger girl. We talked about this. And if you're talking to me, it means you like me. You don't gotta say nothing about my weight. And I say this, because another man messaged me. He says, hey, I love your thickness. I was like, Bitch, I know, you messaged me. <laughs> That's like if I went to KFC and I was like, I love chicken, they know. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> it's implied, you know what I'm saying? I say this because you gotta look at my profile before you message me, and my profile has pictures of all this. I don't hide none of it, right? Because I wanna make sure there are no surprises when I show up to that date. Okay, as a matter of fact, one of the pictures on my profile, the camera's on the ground facing up at me, so you know what it looks like when I'm on that dick. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. I'm getting older. I don't got time to fuck around straight to the point business. Okay? This last bit, the last bit is a little controversial. Some women like this sort of thing. I do not. I think there's many women that agree with me, and it is this. Men, single men, single straight men, stop taking pictures of you laying on your bed, <laughs> on your pillow, looking all seductive. You look like you're trying to find a man like I am. Okay? And I don't got a problem if you're a dude trying to find another dude. That's just not how I set up my filter. Okay? Stop taking pictures of you laying on a bed. Take a picture of you building that motherfucker. That's what we want to see. Yes! Do you hear that? Yes! Okay, pictures, pictures of you building shit, cooking shit, putting shit away. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Cleaning shit, you know? Men, you do that, I promise you, women with their hips will swipe right on your face all day long. My name's Lynette Manning. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>